Hey, I'm Summer. And I'm Mike. And we got married. With children. We're married two years now. Blended for 11. Like a margarita. Yeah, baby, like a margarita. (laughs) And you're listening to the Everything Always podcast. Want to tell them why we do this? Uh, We do this because blending families isn't easy. There's step parenting, co parenting, his ex, her ex, schedules, sibling rivalry, money issues, custody issues, dating and relationship issues. It's a whole lot of stuff. Blended with a whole lot of good stuff. And we're here to talk about all of it because we've done most of it. We might not be experts, but we've learned a lot. And we're still learning, and we want to share that with you. Thanks for joining. Now let's go. Well, hello, Everything Always family, and welcome back to another episode where we talk about blended families. Today, we're focusing on stepmoms, and I am talking to the founder of stepmomming.com. If you are a stepmom and you have been following influencers and leaders in this community, then you already know who Kristen Skiles is because she is like the best of the best. We have so many, we actually have a lot of really great stepmom representatives in, in this world right now. And, and I love it. Kristen is somebody who I really, really wish was blogging and had all this going on the first few years of my entering into those stepmomming years. And granted, I I had two kids of my own. Kristen actually doesn't have children that she birthed. She has her step daughter from her husband, who is basically like her own child, but she didn't come in with with her own kids or have more kids. So, So this is her one and only right now, and they are super close and have such a great relationship. But there were challenges along the way, and we're we're gonna talk about all of that. But I do wish that I had had all of her blogs and all of her information and wisdom way back when. But the funny thing is, is that I don't even think she began her journey at that time. So... <laughs> I'm into it now for a long time, but if there are any of you out there who have just embarked on this, maybe you know, you're know you dating somebody who has a child, this is an absolutely really, really, really good episode for you to listen to. And if you are in those early years, it doesn't matter where you're at, but if you are having those challenges, this is going to be a great episode because we talk about so many things. We're talking about what it's like to be a stepmom when you don't have other children's, the advantages and and the challenges. Also, we're talking about that whole word stepmom and how sometimes, you know, it can have a negative, a negative connotation to it, you know, like, oh, it's this bad word, but it's not. And and how you can really wear that title with honor. And probably one of the most important things we talk about that Mike and I, if you if you know us and if you don't, we are absolutely huge on is setting boundaries and setting boundaries not only for pr- protection of your family, yourself, and your relationship with your husband, but also setting boundaries in, in terms of how much you are, what you are responsible for and making sure that you don't fall into that stepmom martyr role because that can absolutely happen. So there's so many great takeaways here. Kristen Skiles of stepmomming.com. Oh my gosh, so, so good. And if you, if you know, if you're in this world of, of stepmoms, you probably, you probably do know her. And if you don't, you need to go follow her. She's on everywhere. She's on Facebook, Instagram. She's on Pinterest. She's on Twitter. She's even been on morning talk shows. I mean, this girl rocks. <laughs> so you've you've got to follow her. She's also, I want to tell you a few of these things, and then the rest of you're going to hear in the interviews, but she's got like courses and especially I think right now she's got a course running. We'll talk about it in the interview and we'll also have a link to it, which is all about setting and enforcing boundaries for stepmoms, because I think sometimes you don't know what those boundaries should be. And that's what's so helpful with what she does. So you'll get to hear that. She also has incredible co-parenting and parenting resources. She's got all kinds of organizational charts and things. Like if you go to her site, which is stepmomming.com, you'll see, I mean, things like organizing your home life with your children, organizing chores for them. There's stepmom affirmations. There's declutter challenges. 
just so many organization tools. And if you know me and you've been listening, you know that I am so gung-ho about all of that kind of stuff. And I believe that the more of that that you can have implemented, the more organization that you have and the more boundaries that you have, the happier life you will have because there is less clutter going on in your brain and in your space. So she has tools for all of that. And then there's some really great stories like the fact that she started, she first started blogging before it was stepmomming.com. She started a blog with none other than her husband's ex-wife. So <laughs> her, her stepdaughter's mother, if you can believe that. And I know that some of you right now are just going, what, what? There is no time on this planet that that would ever happen. Well, it happened with her, and I would love for you to hear the story. And don't think it's because, you know, they started as best friends. There were There's challenges. There's always challenges. And she's totally being open and vulnerable in talking about those. And she's also talking about how we can be open with certain things that are are going on in our lives and how to do it in a most respectful way. And I so appreciate that about her. So we'll hear the story, how she started the blog, what, how that turned into stepmomming.com. And we'll also hear some other stories that you might say, hmm, how did she even do that? <laughs> so great, great stuff. And I'm really excited for you to listen. Make sure you visit the links that we have in the show notes. You'll find tons of valuable material. Enjoy. Kristen, welcome and thank you so, so much for being on the show. It's been it's been in the making for a while and I'm so excited to finally have you here. I'm so glad we finally made it work. I'm really excited to be here. Oh my gosh, I have been following you. Your community has been so amazing for me and I know for so many women. I've just been just so excited to talk to you because I have so many questions, especially for someone who is out there and really being vulnerable about experiences that you have as a stepmom. And I do the same. And sometimes you question what, what can I say to really share my authentic experience here, but what also do I have to be mindful of? So that's something I definitely want to ask you about. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but before, before we get into all of that, I want to kind of hear from you, your story and why building this community became so important to you? So the blog actually started, it was my stepdaughter's mom's blog. And she started it when we were in the middle of a custody modification. And it wasn't as high conflict as some I've seen, but it, it rocked our world. And she started a mom blog and she wanted to write and be creative. And a couple months later, we ended up settling outside of court and everything was, you know, okay, we were good again. And then I joined the blog the very next month and it was the weirdest transition for us. Wow. But I like through that process, we started writing together about co-parenting and what it was like to be a stepmom and a divorced mom and coming together to build this platform. And about a year later, she ended up leaving to do pursue another creative pursuit and I switched gears and really honed in on the stepmoms that we're following and found my space and really learned and grew myself and found that it was helping other people. And that's how this whole crazy weird thing started because I never dreamt of starting a blog, never, ever, ever in a million years thought I would be a blogger. Also never thought I would be a stepmom. So here we are. Yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing. And now you've got all of these incredible tools. Like you're someone that people look to. You're so mature about how you handle situations. It's just, it's just incredible. I mean, there's so many things that I've looked back and, and I'm like, oh, I know there was a blog or an email from you. I'm like, yes, I've totally been in that situation. Our kids are, our kids are older now, but I just... I just remember so many things and I'm just like, where was she <laughs> all those years ago for me? But it's just, it's amazing. So let's talk about that, how you and Kevin met and what was going on through your mind when you realized, oh my gosh, this is it. This is going to be my life. I now am going to be a stepmom. Like I have these responsibilities now. What was that like? Like, I think I'm still in shock a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So my life at the time, to kind of give you some context, I was working a full-time job anywhere between 40 and 45 hours a week. 
Then I would drive my 30 minute commute home and I would tutor anywhere between two and three hours a night each night. And then I would go home. I'd probably pick up food on the way home or eat a bowl of cereal and work on my master's coursework for my MBA. And then I would start it all over the next day. So I was crazy busy. I've been somebody forever. I mean, honestly, as long as I can remember that wanted to be in a relationship, I wanted the forever. I wanted the family. And I threw myself into my work, my schoolwork, and I just hadn't found him and found Kevin online dating. And I had set a rule, like, I do not want a single dad, 100%. Like I can't handle baggage. Like I can't do that. And that's what I associated it with. Yeah. And then I found Kevin and he was everything I had been looking for. And his daughter was so cute and he melted me. So coming to grips with, holy cow, this man has a child and an ex-wife and how does that work? And I just, I think a lot of us, this is what we do. We just kind of set it in motion. Okay. How do I do this? I'm going to be not only a fantastic wife, I'm going to be a fantastic stepmom. And I'm going to do all the things and it's going to be perfect. And I built it up into a fairy tale Yeah. before reality hit me smack dab in the face. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah. I, and I've, I've been there and I know that feeling too, where I'm like, you know, I had my two kids, Mike had his two kids and you have those moments where they're like, oh my gosh, they're all playing together. It's so wonderful. Look how they all get along and we're having so much. And it is, it's like that fantasy. And then real life happens, day-to-day stuff happens. And you're like, oh, oh, there's an ex that we're dealing with. Oh, I have an ex too. Oh, there's this custody thing, or there's this disagreement with how you guys do this at your house and we do this at our house. Oh yeah. All of that. What, what, yeah. Do you, what were some of the things you experienced that kind of said, oh, this actually isn't a fairy tale. Not that it's not a fairy tale. I mean, I know how in love you are with your family, but like it's not just perfect all the time. Absolutely. So the very first one for me, I had just purchased my first home, gosh, about about a year before I met Kevin, I guess. So I'd been there about a year. I loved my home. I loved the neighborhood. It was exactly eight minutes from my sister and her son, my nephew. And I, I loved everything about it. It was the perfect little home for me. And it was exactly 25 minutes away from my stepdaughter's school district. And there was just no way. I mean, I had three bedroom house at the time my husband was living with his mom because after the divorce, he moved back here. He was still in the National Guard and going to school full time. Yeah. And I was like, but I have a house, but it was her school district. And so I just had to, when we made the decision to move in together, I had to sell my home. And he had bought a house over near his mom. And so I had to move there, even though I loved my home. Right. And it was the first step of like, this is real. This is me making a conscious choice for a different life than I had planned. Yeah. And that was a lot. And then about a year after was when we were just sort of blindsided by being served paperwork to modify the custody agreement. We had all been at back to school night, meet the teacher the week before school started. So it was meet the teacher and his ex, her new partner, we were all getting along so well. And we were like, oh my gosh, this is great. This is a step in the right direction. She was due any day with her second daughter. And we just really felt like it was a gigantic step forward talking about it even later that night as we're getting ready for bed, brushing our teeth and stuff. And there's a knock on the front door and he was served paperwork that night to modify the agreement. Just totally blindsided. Wow. Wow. And that was when I realized that there's this whole other side of it, that it's not even just, she's not here half of the time, but in fact, there's a whole other side of it that can change at any time. And I need to be cognizant of that and making sure we're respectful of our other home and our other set of parents. And just that dynamic finally hit me in that moment. Yeah. We've dealt with something similar and it's a very, like, it really rocks your world in that bubble that you felt like you were in. Completely. Cause, Cause you hear of, like you said, you hear of these high conflict 
issues or you hear other people going through stuff. And then when you're faced with something similar, whether it's, you know, the same or not, or just in that feeling of, oh my gosh, somebody's taking away a part of, or trying to change something that we are really comfortable with Mm -hmm. and feel so safe with. Yeah. It's that I feel like is one of the the biggest things with divorce and, you know, step-parenting. It's like this, you can become super, you have these moments where it's just so comfortable and secure. And then you realize, oh my gosh, like stuff can happen that just totally takes it into a different direction. Yeah. I, I felt really guilty and I did share this. You talked about how sometimes I get really personal when I share, but I shared something back in November, early December, we had gone on a cruise for Thanksgiving week with all of my family. So my grandpa, my aunts, all my cousins, we all went on a cruise and it was just the three of us. And we didn't have cell service, obviously, because we're in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. And I felt guilty for feeling like this is us. This is our family because it's, it's not. My stepdaughter has another family, but the comfortability in that moment and just Mm -hmm. feeling like it was the three of us on vacation with all of my family was, it was the fairy tale. Yeah, totally. Oh my gosh. I know that feeling. And you feel guilty for it, right? You do. You do feel guilty because it's like, oh, and sometimes you feel a little bit, you know, I used to be like, gosh, there's all this stuff that goes on that I don't know about, you know, with Mm -hmm. each set of kids. And it's like, you know, it's, it, we, I still have that feeling, you know, when it's all of us on a family vacation, it's like, this is our family. This is us. And it's just so crazy that there's another side happening Mm -hmm. as well. And it's, it just talk about that and how you have dealt with that. Because I know for me, it's just, a lot of it is just time and a level of maturity, I guess, in the way that you see things and look at things, you just become stronger and you just start to adapt, I guess. But what are some big things that you've seen in yourself, changes, growth, things that you've noticed are so different today than maybe they were when you first became this family? I really love that question because I don't do a ton of introspection like that, looking at the growth. So The first example that comes to mind is thinking how my stepdaughter used to come to our home and she'd want to talk about her mom or what they did. Or I specifically remember one time walking in her room and she had one of those magnetic boards that you could write a message and then erase it. Yeah. And she wrote, I heart mommy and had used her little heart stamps, make hearts on it. And it broke my heart because I was like, you're here, we're here, your dad's here, I'm here, and you're thinking about your mom. And I felt like I had failed, and that was her making a choice that it's not daddy and Kristen, it's mommy. And today, I have just a wildly different perspective, and I can see that my stepdaughter's never making a choice. She's always choosing everyone. When she's with her dad, she misses her mom. When she's with her mom, she misses her dad. Like she's always missing her step parents. There's such a deeper level there. And I was taking it so personally when in fact it wasn't even a little bit personal. It was just, that's just her life and that's her story and her family. And it it's unfair of me to make that about me. Right. I love that. I love that so, so much because that is something that is common, right? Like you said, I mean, we've dealt with that where it was like, you know, one child is here and it's, I I miss my mom or, you know, vice versa. That would happen a lot. And I remember those same feelings where you're like, oh, does that mean, you know, are you, are you not feeling loved enough here? Are you not feeling, you know, you, you start to blame all these things when really it's just like you said, this is their experience different than ours. Those are still their parents. It doesn't mean they don't love you or don't have room to love more people. It's just, that's where they're at right now. And they're just natural feelings that come up, but it's true that you take it as, you know, in the beginning, especially it's like, you're trying so hard to Mm -hmm. make it so wonderful and beautiful all the time that you're like, Oh no, I did something wrong or what's happening. (laughs) But I love that. I've, I've gone through that same, that same experience and it's pretty amazing 
to, to see it so differently. And it actually helps in other areas of your life too. Like to, to look at what is that person experiencing before you do take something personal? Absolutely. And it's not even just my stepdaughter's story. I had this really unique friendship with my stepdaughter's mom for a while when we ran the blog together and talked yeah. through like our different perspectives. And I think it was easily the, the biggest impact on our relationship. But my, my point is, as we talked through these things, I could hear how some of the insecurities that I had from my stepdaughter's actions or, you know, call it this example, she had those same insecurities because when my stepdaughter was at her mom's house, she was talking about us. Right. So you build this narrative in your head of, well, she must love her mommy so much that she thinks about her mommy even when she's here and that much must be her whole life or, you know, whatever that looks like for you. But it's truly the, just that this child is learning how to have two homes and four parents. And that's just how they make sense of missing one parent when they're with the other. Yes. So it's not always that worst case scenario that we try to go to. Totally. Well, let's talk a bit about your role. Let's also talk about being the second wife. That's like a big thing. You know, that's, that in itself comes with a lot of feelings and emotions. What are, what have been some of the challenges in, in that and, and dealing with, you know, what were the emotions and things that come up, especially because this is your first husband? Oh my gosh, there were so many. I mean, that was honestly my biggest struggle. Forget the custody stuff. Forget the, is she unhappy here? Insecurities I had. That the second wife insecurities bypassed them all as my hardest challenge. So I, I just, I questioned everything. My husband didn't make the choice to end his marriage. His ex did. She one day said, I want a divorce. And he was blindsided and he was heartbroken and he would have never chosen to get divorced. Right. Whether that's because he was happy in his marriage or it was just that he was raised in a conservative home where we don't get divorced. He would have never made the decision to to leave. And that rocked me to my core because I mean, what you're saying is if you had the choice, you would still be married. And right. that, that I mean, just, it ripped me apart. I couldn't separate myself from, he didn't choose to leave to understand that, that he is choosing you now, no matter what happened then, no matter how the circumstances happened today, he's choosing you and he has a choice today. He has a choice of anybody else in this world he was heartbroken and he's taking a chance on you because you're worth it. And it was when I could really understand that, that I could kind of overcome everything else. There was a time when I was comparing everything that I did to her and I was thinking about her nearly constantly. And it's, I don't think it's uncommon. I think there are a lot of people who go through this. Oh, it's so common. Yeah. Yeah. You know, am I as good of a cook as she is? Am I as good with the kids as she is? Am I as good of a wife as she was? And feeling like there's competition, but there's truly not. They're completely separate and there is no competition because you're forever. And I just wish I could have told myself that and saved myself the year more than that of the heartbreak, the daily turmoil of all of this. That was just thoughts and things that you're just, it's almost like you're creating it because it's your imagination really, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) There's nobody, he's not there saying, you don't really make a grilled cheese the way she did. You know what I mean? There's none of that happening. It's, it's, it's our imagination and insecurities that run, that just run wild until you start to realize, wait a minute. I'm a totally different person. And like you said, like really, what helped you actually come to that realization? There's a couple of things. One of them I've never talked about before. So I'm going to focus on the first one first and then I'll get to that. Okay. I went to a women's retreat 
my mother-in-law invited me and we went and they had what they called quiet time. It was mandatory. Nobody could talk for like 45 minutes at a time, maybe 30 minutes. And I sat and I journaled and I'm like, we have to get through this. What, what is going on, Kristen? What are you thinking? Why don't you like her? Why are you comparing yourself to her? Why are you unhappy? What is the root of all of this? And I just kept asking myself questions in one color pen. And then I would write the answer in a different color. And I had to keep writing through my thoughts and feelings on this until I felt satisfied with the answer. So I felt like I had gotten to the root of it. Yeah. And just having alone, quiet time with all of those thoughts and going as deep as I needed to all the way back to my childhood, if necessary, truly gave me clarity. And once I understood what my issue actually was, then I could address it and I could fix it. Mm -hmm. Just having this like cloud of, I feel insecure. I don't feel good enough. I was never going to be able to fix that. Right. Oh, that is so important. That is so important. So many people get wrapped up in just the feeling that they're having, not understanding the source and the root of it. So how could you possibly fix it without knowing that? Without just trying to bury it. Right. Right. And it will go away. Yeah. So that was the big one. The part that I've never really talked about is when his ex lived with us, they lived here for three months, her and her husband. And her oh my gosh. Yes. So there's a bomb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they lived with us for three months. We had just moved into our dream home and we had a couple of extra bedrooms and we like, we're going to make them an office and a guest room, but it was, you know, you guys need a place to live. Just come move in with us. We have plenty of room. And that's a whole nother story. <laughs> I was going to say that's got to be <laughs> but a big, a big lesson I learned there is that I had built up this entire narrative in my head of who she was as a mom and a wife. And then I saw in those three months, who she is as a wife and a mom. And I'm not saying she's not a good wife and a mom, but it's just an entirely different wife and mom role than I had built up in my mind. Right. Nobody is as perfect as the person as I was portraying and comparing. <laughs> <myself again. laughs> yeah. And, and so I think that was part of it for me too, was like, okay, I can breathe because we're all flawed and this is, we're, nobody's perfect. We're all in this together and she's human. I'm human. We're good. I love that. It's, uh, you know, I don't know if you listen to our podcast, but Mike and I talk about the four agreements all the time Mm -hmm. and how much trouble you get in with taking things personally and making assumptions because we do, we, we build up, like you said, these narratives and these things in our mind because our imaginations are pretty wild and crazy and creative, but not always working to our advantage. (laughs) And it's just so true. It's just that reminder of, okay, is what I'm thinking and making up, is, is that real? Or am I just, you know, spinning, spinning this into something? And I tell, I tell our kids that a lot because there's times when, you know, they have a disagreement with a friend or something's going on. And, you know, if a friend hasn't gotten back to them or ignored them at school, it's like this whole narrative that they create. And I can see it because I've done it myself. And I'm like, no, 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 (laughs) don't do it. That's awesome. That is so, so awesome. So I don't recommend everybody go about that the same way I do. Just take my word for it. They're not as perfect as you. They yeah. Don't they don't, they don't need to move in with you. <laughs> That's definitely, I'm sure listeners are like, wait, but I want to hear how that actually happened. So we might have to have you back. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Yes, we appreciate you so much. And we hope you know that we support you in whatever stage you're at. We took a leap here, sharing our mistakes and wins with you. Yeah, we're getting pretty vulnerable here, but we know that we've learned from those who have been brave enough to share with us. And we want to do that with you. Hey, can you do us a favor? If you like what you hear, will you press pause and rate the podcast and write a review? Oh, and while you're at it, share it, please. And if you have questions, you can find us on all of our social channels. Okay. Ready to get back to it? Let's do it. In talking about, you know, sharing these experiences, you share so many wonderful things. And I do, you know, I, I wonder this from, for myself, for my personal reasons, you know, having, having a podcast and Mike and I sharing 
certain stories, but there are things that, that we don't share. There might be Mm -hmm. some big, huge things that are happening that we are still figuring out and navigating. Like we want to share, we want to help others. That's the whole purpose. We're doing this. However, there's some things where we have to say, I don't think we can share that for, you know, to be respectful of other people that are involved. So I wondered, you know, I thought, well, this is going to be a great opportunity for me to ask you, do you have a gauge or a filter or how is it that you determine what you will and won't share? And I think this is also helpful in terms of people sharing with other friends or things that you do want to talk about or talk about in front of your kids. So what is your process or I don't know what, how, how do you determine that? I absolutely have a filter. There are a lot of things that I will probably never share because my stepdaughter turns 10 next month. She has access to the internet and my husband's ex ran the blog with me. She obviously knows that it exists. (laughs) Yeah. I want to be truthful to my story, but I also have to be cognizant of my husband's story, his daughter's story, his ex's story. And if at any point my blog becomes a source of contention in my real life, then it's gone. It's done because my real life comes first. So I often have others read my blog posts before I publish them. My husband, I had a blog post a couple months ago, I think now that I wrote specifically about my stepdaughter. And I said, you know, I sat her down after school and I said, Hey baby, I wrote something. And I, I think this is your story and I want to make sure you're okay with me putting this out there. And I've sent blog posts to his ex before about our relationship to make sure she had buy-in before it published. And when we ran the blog together, if there was anything either of us didn't approve of, it didn't publish. Right. And I try so hard to be transparent that my life isn't perfect. I'm not a perfect stepmom. My husband's not perfect. My stepdaughter's not perfect. Her mom isn't perfect. None of us are perfect. And I try to be transparent about that without ever being disrespectful to everyone else's narratives along this journey. So I have them approve, but there have been times when I've posted something that I thought was completely innocuous. I thought I was completely good to publish it. It was a matter of fact. I'm obviously not going to share with you exactly what it was because my stepdaughter's mom reached out and said, that makes me really uncomfortable. Can you take that down? Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and I did. Um, yeah. No questions asked. Everything was deleted. And I mean, that's what I'm going to continue to do. That's my policy. But... My stepdaughter has access to the internet and I want to always put them first, if that makes sense. Absolutely. We've done something similar. I mean, there were questions when we started this, you know, from one of the other parents, you know, well, hey, this isn't going to be fair. You can't exploit the kids. And we're like, no, 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 no. And of course, that's the first thing. No, we're not going to be talking about all of their embarrassing moments or the risks or that. Mm -hmm. And we do, we run it by them. Hey, we want to talk about this. What do you think? Because they're older, you know, we've got teenagers and our youngest is about to be a teenager in a couple of months. So that's four teenagers. And it was, it's like, they're going through a lot. And I think it might've been different when they were younger. I'm not sure, but we do the same thing. Like we want to make sure it's okay that we're sharing certain things. But yeah, I think it's, but it, like you said, there's times when you're like, well, how, why would anyone, I think this is totally fine. And then it's like, oh, I guess it's not, <laughs> I guess this person might feel this way about it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, you have to, we have to be very careful as well, but I love that you're, I love that you're able to have that relationship too, that you can send that and say, Hey, what do you think of this? And that there's that res- mutual respect too, that you're like, I'll just take this down if you don't like it. So I applaud that. Okay. One thing that I would love to discuss is let's talk about the word stepmom. Because Mm -hmm. when I first became a stepmom, 
there were so many people saying, it's such a bad word, use the word bonus. There was this mm-hmm. whole bonus mom, bonus dad. And, you know, we, we were like, oh, okay, I, I guess that's what we should start to do. And, and the kids would say, my, and now they just say my brother and sister because it's been so long, but they dappled with that, my bonus brother. And then they'd kind of look at us like, did we say that right? And it was a very, it was an awkward thing for them. Yeah. And I think of that word step and I think to myself, why did it become such for some people, like an icky word. And I'd love to get your take on that because I know that you say it's not a bad word, you know? (laughs) And I'd like to be like, why can't it just be okay to say stepmom? Why is that a bad thing? Yeah. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my soapbox because this is one of my, I don't even know, one of my biggest things in the stepmom community is I'm a proud stepmom. I totally get that Disney got it wrong and the word yes. of, of the evil connotation. And I, I do, I get that. And I don't even have an issue with bonus mom, except that I don't like bonus mom when you're only using it because you don't like stepmom. So right, you, right. Like, set that out there. If you are a bonus mom and you just want to be a bonus mom, not because you have an issue with board stepmom we're totally good. We're cool. Right. But I I think instead of just accepting that people think stepmoms are evil and we just let that live on, we should be working instead to change the connotation because I am legally a stepmom. Nothing's going to change that. Even if I introduce myself as a bonus mom, nothing's going to change that. I'm legally a step parent. So instead of just accepting that that's the popular narrative, let's change it. I am a good stepmom to my stepdaughter. I feel it with every fiber of my being and I get feedback from her and from my husband that says the same thing. So shouldn't I go out and spread that example? Shouldn't you go out and spread that example of good stepmoms so that we can change that narrative instead of just saying, oh, it's a lost cause. Like the more of these positive examples that we get out there, the more that people are going to begin to associate stepmom with you and me and the other positive examples than with Disney and Cinderella. Exactly. I really, really do love that. There's so much to be proud of as a stepmom. I mean, I stepped up, I stepped into this role I've loved and I've cared for somebody else's child. And honestly, I just refuse to be ashamed of that. Exactly. Oh, exactly. I love that's so, it's so refreshing and awesome to hear. And I hope that people listening like really take that to heart because it's unfortunate, but there are people that when they say, oh, I, you know, it is kind of like a, they get a little bit more quiet or it's a, it is like a Disney associated thing, <laughs> but I, I what I think is so hopeful in today's, today's world is there are a lot more blended families. There are a lot more step parents and there's so many positive stories. And with social media and the internet, you're able to see more of those. Sure. There are, there are some situations that are not so great. That's like with every single family, that's parents, kids, there's unfortunate situations, but it used to be a very, a much more negative thing. And I hope that, I hope that we are changing that. And I hope that those of us that are stepmoms or, you know, who's married to someone who is a step parent can really help to lift that up and really put it in a positive light because we do a lot (laughs) and it's, and it's awesome. It's, it's a great experience. But, you know, with being a step parent, something that can happen and sometimes this, what can happen that I've seen and have even experienced myself is when a couple comes together and there's a child involved and one of the kids is not yours, your spouse is kind of like, cool, I've got this extra set of hands now. I've got somebody Mm -hmm. who can help. And sometimes it can turn into, I'm all of a sudden I'm kind of doing almost everything or I'm doing all of these things that I was never responsible for before. How can you in a loving way have this responsibility, but at the same time, 
set boundaries? Like what have, what have you done and have you experienced this yourself? You are welcome to do all of the things for everybody in your family and do them all with a loving heart. But at the point that you help, help, help and are no longer doing it with a helpful, happy heart and you're doing it resentful, Mm -hmm. you're now just becoming a martyr and you're not setting those boundaries. And so you have to kind of step back and evaluate because I've completely been sucked into this, especially in the beginning, because I felt thrown into this. And I think part of it was my husband was happy to have an extra set of hands. I do think that was part of it. But I think the other part is, again, this narrative I build up in my head of, well, I'm going to be the mom in this house. So I have to cook and I have to clean and I have to do the laundry and I need to be the one to help her with the homework. And I need to make sure she's getting a bath. And I volunteered (laughs) for a lot of it because I thought that's what I had to do. And I didn't realize that this sounds so silly. Like I don't even want to verbalize it, but I think I need to. I didn't realize that my husband didn't need me. He was doing just fine on his own. And I came along to support him, not to save him. And yeah, it's a distinct difference. And so realizing that I could step back and delegate some of those back to him, take what I could on with a happy, helpful heart and a, a loving heart toward my stepdaughter. It's not just to be helpful to my husband, but making sure that we're both happy with the balance as a partnership. And I could step back and that allowed me time to do the things that I loved. I was able to go out with my best friend for a wine night. I could go have lunch with my nephew at school. I started going back to boot camp nearly every morning. And that was what I needed to get my identity back because I just right. kind of threw my everything into being a stepmom and forgot what made me me. And I just really needed to find that again. Oh my gosh. It's, I love that you're saying this in the key thing that stands out is I was there to support, not to save. And I, I remember going through a similar time and then I would start to feel guilty if my husband would say, Hey, do you think you, could you get Ashlyn from school today? And I would have a meeting and I would be like, Oh my gosh, I better change my meeting, change all these things. And that was me just putting that on myself Yes. until there was one time I was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like freaking out because I felt so bad that I couldn't. And he was like, Hey, it's okay. <laughs> it's like, I did all this before. Like I can do it without you. I'm just, I just asked if you could help. If you can't don't change everything, you know? And I was like, I was the one making myself the martyr, you know, and doing things out of guilt instead of, like you said, that a happy heart, like I love doing this. And sometimes you just can't. <laughs> And sometimes you have to, you have to make yourself a priority as well. Again, it just sounds so silly, but I didn't know that I could say no. Yeah. No. I, yeah. And <laughs> yes. I have an equal say in this family. And it was so hard for me to realize that at first. And it took somebody literally breaking it down into something that simple. You can say no, you have an equal say. And I was like, well, that's crazy. Are you sure? It's so, I'm so accustomed to it now. Of course I have an equal say. Of course I can say, no, I can't rearrange my life and cancel this important meeting to get there. But I've done that. I was that person. I mean, you tell that story somewhere and I'm like, yup. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) No. And I think it's, I think it's so, it's a common thing amongst, amongst stepmoms. I mean, that's a really common feeling. One thing that Mike and I have talked about this, and I know that I think you share a a similar view is when you're sharing custody, you know, sometimes it's like, oh no, but I want, I want them all the time, but Mm -hmm. there's that silver lining. There's that like, oh, we get this time alone together now. (laughs) How is that? You know, how do you guys look at that? Because I've seen some of your posts and I, so I know sometimes I know that feeling where you're just like, oh you know, we're going to miss you now because now you're going back to your moms or whatever's happening. But what are, talk about those, those highlights of your relationship because of the situation that you're in. 
So I've kind of like gone in stages here because when I first met my husband, who was my boyfriend then, of course, he would come and see me on the days that he didn't have his daughter. And we would go out on dates and we would watch movies and binge watch The Office, you know, just a normal couple. And on the days that he had his daughter, well, then I could, we could have a family date. And we did one of those days. We would all three go out and do something. But I love this separation of, okay, well, we have family time, but we're still focusing on us as a couple. But as I got more invested, then I started to understand that, oh, well, I miss her when she's not here. Because I didn't always understand that. I was like, well, but I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> and so I got to this place where I was like, I don't know. I was feeling guilty. Should I be missing her more? Should we be focusing on the fact she's not here? Our home isn't the same. And I mean, I still remember writing Instagram captions saying, you know, our, our home isn't the same when she's not here. And it, and it isn't. Our home is a lot quieter when she's not here. And it's a lot cleaner. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> it's, but it's also like, she brings such a joy to the room and she has such a big personality. And so it is different. There's a different mood. But where I am today is just like, well, I love it. I love that we have built-in date night and I see other parents stressing about a babysitter for Valentine's Day. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm good. I know she goes back to her mom's on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get alone time with my husband because I am a child with stepmom. I don't have kids of my own. And so we have a few days every week that are just for the two of us. And then we know she comes back and we're a family and we have that too. It's different. And if she were here every day, I would welcome her with open arms and we would absolutely love being a full-time family. Not ever, ever, ever arguing that. But I have to see the silver lining because otherwise you can find things to be upset about and you can choose to be resentful of everything in this life. Right. So that's my silver lining is we just have built in alone time. Yes, totally. That's what, and that's same with us. That's how we've always looked at it. I love that. Oh my gosh, this has been amazing. I love talking about all these things. This is so fun. Um, (laughs) Let's talk about where our listeners can find you. And then I also want to talk about something really awesome that you have going on. It's a course. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to let you, I want you to talk about it. So first, where can people find you? And second, let's talk about this course. Okay. I am at stepmomming.com, S-T-E-P-M-O-M-M-I-N-G.com at Stepmomming on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, at Stepmomming blog on Twitter. And I do, I have a whole shop full of printables, but the one that I am super, super stoked about is because it's exactly what I needed when I was an early stepmom who said, yes, your ex-wife can live with us. (laughs) (laughs) It's an entire course about setting and respecting and enforcing boundaries as a stepmom. So it's this crazy cool premise. It's 14 days. I talk about it like a Jillian Michaels workout. So small little things every day, and it's going to have that really big impact in the end. Because I didn't want it to be crazy time intensive or, you know, sitting for hours journaling the way that I did with my second wife insecurities, you know, those kinds of things. Right. So you get a small little lesson every day. You get a takeaway a little bit of journaling, but only like a half page and one assignment every day. So one of the assignments is like today, you have to say no and not justify it. So you just say like, no is your final answer. And I love it. I love the way that it's hyper-focused on stepmoms and the exact challenges that we're all facing because honestly, boundaries was a foreign word to me when I came into this role. I just, people would say, you have to set boundaries. You have to set boundaries, especially when his ex moved in. And I yeah. just, I, she told me that one day, she was like, I got advice from a friend that we really need to sit down and set boundaries. And I was like, okay, what does that mean? How do we do that? <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I, I know it sounds so silly, but I truly didn't know what that meant And this course is going to take you from A to Z on all of it. 
and get you to where you need to be, where you feel like you can protect your peace. And even if other people are coming at you. Right. Exactly. Oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. So how, how would we find the course? Okay. So you would go to shop.stepmomming.com and it's on our front page. It's called the setting stepmom boundaries made easy. I think is what it's called. Okay, perfect. And that's if anyone's listening, wants to go, but just know that we will have all of this in the show notes too. links to everything that you've mentioned, but just in case someone's, you know, (laughs) listening right now and has to go find it. (laughs) They're like, yes, sign me up. Sign me up. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Again, I wish I had you when (laughs) when I was first starting out. Was there, I don't think there was Instagram yet. Not just yet. (laughs) That's where I found you. Thank you so much for for all of this. There's so many golden nuggets. I'm, I'm just so grateful. And I just love talking to you because I relate to all of these things. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think we just continuously learn, but what's so amazing is looking back and seeing how far we've come. So congratulations to you and your beautiful family. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. This has been a lot of fun. And I like that I got to share some things I've never said before. I know. Thank you. I'm honored you did it here. (laughs) All right, you guys, thanks so much for listening. And thank you, Kristen. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Our goal is to bring you all kinds of value that will help you navigate these challenging waters of blending a family. Reach out to us if there's something specific you want to hear. And don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast. And if you really like it, share with someone you love. Ooh, and be bold enough to share it with someone you don't. 